Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Sweet and Maxwell, Thomson Reuters. And it's part of the Contract Law Library series of books that they've published. This one is on misrepresentation, mistake and non-disclosure. Now on a fourth edition and it's been written by John Cartwright. Um, this is a very important book and an area of, again of law which is uh, highly contentious very popular and the law is in fact to a certain extent still quite uncertain um, regarding some aspects of a certain mistake and so it makes a wonderful examination topic and if you're looking for a first it's books of this nature that you need to read in order to gain that extra gloss to give you the highest marks. Now Elizabeth and I talked about this book in some detail because uh, it's such an interesting one and we gave our review the following title the definitive work on misrepresentation mistake and non-disclosure now in a new fourth edition well let's look at the book first of all this is it here it's a hardback green cover there we go you can see the front then the spine common law library then the title then i can't write the name fourth edition and sweet and maxwell mentioned at the bottom there's a nice little divider ribbon uh, which is very useful because I don't like uh, myself, I do not like the uh, e-books. I like to be able to cross-refer to different pages in a, in a book. But I'm a bit old-fashioned, I think, by some people's views. Now, it's under 700 pages long. There's the back of it, the index. It's by paragraph numbering, so you should find things quite easily. Uh, the index starts there, you can see. And then if we go to the back of the book, you can see there is paragraph numbering. And then there are the footnotes and everything at the bottom. So you should be able to find things. At the front of the book, you've got uh, the title page there. Then you've got the basic blurb and then a preface, uh, which is well worth reading to give you an idea of why the book has been brought up to date. And what Mr Cartwright does is he sets out exactly what has been happening. He does mention Brexit in part, but I mean that is not going to have any effect initially on where we're going. There's a very useful abbreviations uh, section uh, which I did find very helpful, uh, plus of course selected abbreviations in addition. Uh, then you've got uh, the table of contents and he kicks off straight away with the, the very substantial areas that he's looking at. It runs all the way through. There are a total of uh, 17 chapters uh, three parts to it separating out the the three areas and then you've got the table of cases very large number of cases involved then after that you've got uh, tables of statutes then of course the statutory instruments uh, which are uh, there then after that you do have the uh, table of European legislation. I mentioned he, he discusses the referendum in the preface. The fact is that the European legislation will be with us for some considerable time uh, yet, uh, but we now have to think of what's going to happen in the future. Then you've got a table of foreign statutes, uh, and then you get into the general book itself. There's a little index at the front of the chapter to tell you what's in it. Then you've got the paragraph numbering, and then the footnoting, and that runs all the way through the work. It's a very important work, this book in the Law of Contract, and it's one that I believe uh, is invaluable to you if you are a common law civil practitioner and you deal with quite a lot of disputes involving the identity of people, the way in which the contract has actually been arrived at and all of the problems associated with it. And as I've said before, it is actually um, very useful academically because there is a, a large amount of room for disagreement on some aspects, certainly of title to goods and so forth. So you can see um, it's an examiner's uh, you know, really pleasure to ask questions in this area. So what do we say then about the book? Well, Recently published by Sweet and Maxwell and part of their esteemed contract law library, the new fourth edition of this definitive text deals with issues pertaining to the law of contract, which practitioners face on a regular basis, whether with private clients or at law centres or CABs. And these are what we call vitiating factors. That's what we 
basically call them as lawyers. Um, in other words, then that's what they're known as, because they can be jolly troublesome, to put it bluntly. Um, as the book's title indicates, they include misrepresentation, the stake, and non-disclosure. I think there's a lot of confusion, uh, certainly about the whole of this area. There is some legislation, of course, the Misrepresentation Act. Um, but the three areas that we're looking at are what we describe as a veritable unholy trinity of ills that contractual arrangements are so often heir to. And that's actually the problem because of the consequences of what happens when there is either the misrep, the mistake or the non-disclosure. Uh, now the focus of this book, says the author John Cartwright, is the impact of these factors during the negotiations for a contract and the remedies which are in consequence available to one or both parties to the contract. But he adds, in one sense, the most fundamental of the topics discussed in this book is mistake, of which misrepresentation is effectively a subcategory, at least that's how it's being put forward here, generally stemming from an assertion by the claimant that the defendant has given him inaccurate information on which he has relied and which therefore has caused him to make the mistake. And that, that is the basis of it. And of course, remember the technical areas we get into, innocent and fraudulent misrepresentation and so on. I'm not going to go into all of that detail because it's, it's very well covered in the book. And as I've indicated, this is the sort of book, if you want a first, this is the sort of book you need to refer to because it is actually the ultimate authority. And without this sort of publication from Sweet and Maxwell, we can't do our jobs properly. Now, let me just deal with the third aspect, non-disclosure. That's the third factor in the trio, and it stems basically from the defendant's failure to provide information. This is something which is, is always a big problem, because it's the failure, it's the omission that is the problem in, that can cause a lot of um, issues as well. Certainly, of course, in tort it does, and in criminal law, but you can see here it can be a problem too. Details of ramifications and remedies are also set out in this book. And always remember the remedies element because that's what the client is after. And it gives a, um, presents a clear and authoritative examination of, of what is a complicated area. The book also touches on comparative approaches from other legal systems, both civil and common law, to similar issues. And I think that's of some help as we do tend to be more global today in our approach. Without doubt, this is an important book, which has gone through regular updates since the first edition uh, came out in 2002. The author, as I say, is John Cartwright, and he speaks with authority as professor of the Law of Contract and Tutor in Law at uh, Christ, Church, uh, Christ Church, Oxford, as well as being professor of Anglo-American private law at the University of Leiden. Um, as he's also a solicitor, it's not surprising that the orientation of the book uh, reconciles the academic with the practical in its general approach. And I think any practitioner will find this book very helpful too. Do read the preface at the beginning because that updates you as to where the book is going in 2017. Over its three parts and the 17 chapters then, the book provides systematic coverage of respectively misrepresentation, mistake and non-disclosure in, in substantial detail. And there is much new material included um, in response to the changes in primary and secondary legislation that have occurred since the previous edition came out in 2012. And I think it's important to note in particular the important changes resulting from the enactment of the Consumer Rights Act 2015 and the range of remedies now available, including special remedies set out in the Act. And again, Parliament has intervened here um, to, to again bring some clarity. I sometimes wish I don't have to say that because when I say clarity it sometimes does the opposite, but never mind. Let me conclude by saying this. As contractual matters constitute a core area of the study and practice of law, it's a cornerstone of English law, practitioners keen to keep themselves informed and up to date on important developments in this discipline should get this book. Its invaluable research resources include extensive footnoting as well as almost 60 uh, pages of tables of cases, uh, statutes, SIs, European legislation which is still current and foreign statutes. So it is actually very helpful <clears throat> and there is the comparative element. So most or all practitioners uh, will advise that if you have chitty on contracts, um, 
don't we all? You should also have this book as well. Uh, obviously, Chitty is, is by far the most important work in the area and used by the judiciary and so forth. But this book also is extremely helpful. As I said, this is where the law is. You really do need both as part of a well-stocked professional library. And the publication date is cited at 2017. Let's just have a look at it again. There's the front, there's the spine. There's nothing on the back as such. Just opening it in the middle. Uh, liability in tort for misrepresentation, negligent misrepresentation. A lovely area, very detailed, always popular with examiners. You notice that some of the footnotes are very long, and that is a bit of a problem. But one of the reasons for that is, in this, for instance, in this area of negligent misrepresentation, there's a lot of case law, so there's a lot of additional, frankly, justification for the basic bald statements that are made. For instance, that's dealing with remoteness of, of damage there. It's a wonderful book, and I'd like to thank John Cartwright very much for, for continuing to edit it, and for the sterling work that he and all these other people uh, do to assist us when we're dealing with the clients and when we're trying to understand where the law is today. Because I started off by saying that one of the problems in this area is there is a little bit of a lack of clarity in certain aspects, which is great for the academic, but it does cause a few problems for us advising clients. So without this book, it would make life a lot more difficult. Thank you so much to everybody concerned. Another excellent book uh, from Sweet and Maxwell. Thank you. Bye-bye.